When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. But playing the Game of Thrones is really playing the Game of Power. And in this Game of Power, there are 48 Lords. Knowing these Lords and how to execute them are crucial. In this video, I will tell you exactly why if Tywin Lannister was alive during the Dance of Dragons, he would have won this war in a blink of an eye. Thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's do this. Law 15 of Robert Greene's The 48 Laws of Power states, crush your enemy totally. This law emphasizes the importance of not just defeating your adversaries, but completely eliminating their ability to counter or retaliate. It's about ensuring that once you engage in a conflict, you do so decisively and conclusively, leaving no room for future threats or challenges from those you have defeated. In the unforgiving landscape of power dynamics, where the stakes often dictate the difference between ascendance and ruin, Tywin Lannister emerges as a paradigmatic figure whose adherence to Law 15, crush your enemy totally, epitomizes strategic acumen and unyielding resolve. Within the intricate web of alliances, betrayals, and conquests that define both the fictional realm of Westeros and the timeless principles expounded in Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Tywin's calculated application of this law during the Rain Tarbeck Rebellion stands as a testament to his mastery of the game. The seeds of Tywin's approach to power were sown during his formative years under the leadership of his father, Lord Tydos Lannister, whose weak rule invited derision and disrespect from vassals and rivals alike. Tydos' inability to command respect as the head of House Lannister earned him the moniker Laughing Lion, a mocking epithet that underscored his perceived ineffectiveness. Tywin, ever observant and keenly aware of the ramifications of perceived weakness, resolved to restore the honor and authority of House Lannister through means that would command fear and reverence. The pivotal moment arose when House Reign of Castamere, once second only to the Lannisters in wealth and influence, openly defied Titus's authority by defaulting on loans and openly mocking the Lannister demands for repayment. This act of defiance not only challenged House Lannister's financial stability, but also threatened its standing as the preeminent power in the Westerlands. Tywin, recognizing the existential threat posed by the Reign's insolence, seized upon the rebellion not merely as a military conflict, but as an opportunity to enforce absolute dominion over his domain. Tywin's response was characterized by meticulous planning and ruthless execution. Rather than engaging in a protracted war of attrition, which might risk prolonging the conflict and allowing room for uncertainty, Tywin opted for swift and decisive action. He mustered his forces and surrounded Castamere with overwhelming numbers, forcing the reins and their supporters into the safety of their ancestral minds a strategic retreat that Tywin had anticipated and exploited. While the Reigns believed themselves secure within the labyrinthine tunnels of Castamere, Tywin's forces sealed all entrances and diverted a nearby stream to flood the mines, a methodical and merciless tactic that left no room for escape or surrender. Throughout the night, the echoes of their cries reverberated through the tunnels, a haunting symphony of defeat that underscored the consequences of challenging House Lannister's authority. By morning, Castamere lay silent, its halls and chambers now tombs for those who had dared to defy Tywin Lannister. The extinction of House Reign was not merely a military victory, but a testament to Tywin's unwavering commitment to Law 15. In annihilating his enemies utterly, Tywin sent a chilling message to all who dared question the supremacy of House Lannister a lesson etched in blood and stone that resonated throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Tywin Lannister's success in the annihilation of House Rain serves as a case study in the application of power dynamics outlined in Robert Greene's laws. His actions were not driven by passion or impulse, but by a calculated strategy designed to eliminate any potential threat to his house's dominance. In achieving such a resounding victory, Tywin solidified House Lannister's reputation as a force to be feared and respected. 
a lesson that reverberates through both fictional narratives and real-world power struggles. If Tywin were alive during the events of House of the Dragon and retained his position as Hand of the King, his understanding and application of Law 15 would undoubtedly have been pivotal. In a scenario akin to Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen's conflict, where dragons were the ultimate instruments of power, Tywin's advantage in strategy and ruthlessness would have reshaped the course of history. With superior numbers of dragons, Tywin would have unleashed them upon King's Landing, burning any who stood in his way, a devastating display of force that few could withstand. Conversely, if faced with fewer dragons akin to King Aegon Targaryen, Tywin would have bided his time, meticulously planning his strike. Recognizing Dragonstone as a key stronghold, he would have waited for the opportune moment to strike, burning it to the ground and severing the heart of his adversary's power base. Queen Rhaenyra's fierce love for her children, combined with Tywin's reputation for exacting retribution, would likely have led to her capitulation rather than risking harm to her heirs. Historical Comparison Hernán Cortés' conquest of the Aztec Empire provides a vivid illustration of Law 15 in action. When Cortés arrived in Mexico in 1519, he faced a formidable adversary in the form of the Aztec Empire, ruled by Emperor Moctezuma II. Despite being vastly outnumbered and initially facing challenges in navigating unfamiliar terrain and politics, Cortés meticulously planned his strategy. Cortés understood the strategic importance of not just defeating the Aztecs militarily, but ensuring that their civilization and leadership were entirely dismantled. He leveraged alliances with rival indigenous groups and exploited internal divisions within the Aztec Empire. These alliances provided him with crucial intelligence and additional military support, enhancing his capability to wage war against the Aztecs. During the siege of Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital, Cortes employed ruthless tactics. He imposed a blockade to cut off food and water supplies to the city, weakening the Aztec defenders over time. This siege strategy not only wore down the Aztec resistance, but also served to demoralize the population and leadership within Tenochtitlan. When the city finally fell in 1521, after a prolonged and devastating siege, Cortes did not stop at mere victory. He systematically looted the city, destroyed its temples, and captured or killed its leaders, including Emperor Moctezuma II himself. Cortes aimed not just to conquer the Aztec Empire, but to obliterate its civilization and replace it with Spanish dominion. By applying Law 15, Cortes ensured that there would be no chance of a resurgence of Aztec power. He eliminated the Aztec leadership, dismantled their institutions, and imposed Spanish authority over the region. Cortes's ruthless pursuit of total victory exemplifies the principle that it is often safer to crush one's enemies totally than to leave them with any capacity to rise again. In conclusion, Law 15 emphasizes the strategic wisdom of ensuring that once you engage in a conflict, you do so decisively and conclusively. Hernán Cortés' conquest of the Aztec Empire serves as a powerful historical example of this principle in action. By understanding and applying Law 15, individuals and leaders can learn the importance of winning battles and securing long-term strategic advantages by eliminating the potential for future threats from defeated adversaries. Tywin Lannister's adherence to Law 15 underscores his mastery of the game of power. His calculated and unyielding approach to the Rain Tarbeck Rebellion exemplifies the enduring relevance of crushing one's enemies totally. So tell me what you think in the comment section. I can't wait to hear from you. If you can, become a member of the Teflon Mafia by becoming a member of the channel. And also subscribe, click that bell so we can be spread out. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.